Uh, good evening and welcome to yet another edition of DXB Today. Great to have your company over the course of the next hour or so. It's been another busy day here in Dubai. When is there not a busy day here in Dubai? I hope you've been enjoying uh, the day thus far. An opportunity for us now, though, to reflect on some of the big events of recent times, but also just how far we've come. We constantly talk to you about how this place has become a hub for so many different industries, a hub for so many different talents. But today, well, we shine a light on homegrown talent. Move aside the international brands. It's all about those that have made their name here and taken those brands further afield. So let's see what's coming up on the show tonight. Khalid heads down to the Dubai World Trade Center to explore the world's biggest annual F&B event, Gulf Food 2024. And we catch up with the biggest acts and artists from the first mega music festival in Dubai, untold at the Expo City. Plus, we're also meeting the rising stars of the entrepreneurial scene. And we've got talented singer Sarah Hashmi waiting patiently in the green room as we speak for a special performance a little later on. So a lot for us to get through throughout the course of this evening. So big focus today on, look, I know we go on about entrepreneurial spirit. I know we do it a lot. I know we talk about that a lot because it, it, it literally is one of the sort of beating hearts. It's the theme, one of the themes of this city. But I'm excited about this one. Why? Because today we're going to really drill down on homegrown talent. All of us have been here for a long time. We've all been involved in various projects here for many, many years. And one thing that's always struck me, I remember when I first set out here as a journalist many, many years ago, and the big thing in town, the big news, was when an international brand came to town. International artist, uh, a celebrity chef, uh, another big brand to one of the malls, etc. It was all about the opening, it was all about that. How times have changed now, it's all about the openings of the homegrown talents that have established their names here, not just here, but further afield. Absolutely. I love this thriving ecosystem here in the UAE that really encourages new startups, of course, and a lot of homegrown brands. Personally, some of the brands that really make me proud that have, you know, crossed overseas and I've really created a buzz huda beauty for example i mean she's no stranger to this channel she's been on here from many many years ago today she is a billionaire running such a huge beauty industry to see how what started off as a little kiosk in sephora with her little lashes to make this noise internationally makes me so proud another brand that we're all very excited about the giving movement i mean you see almost that's almost the uniform especially when people are traveling it's like the the favorite airport look for a lot of people so to see how popular some of these homegrown brands have become in the global scene is just exciting and as a dubai resident it just fills me with pride yeah i i, I must agree like i remember going into boots in the uk and uh and seeing huda's uh display there yeah and i was just like i was with my daughter and i was just like, oh, oh i know her She's like, what, really? Like, oh my God. And I was like, yeah, it was normal for us because we've, we, we breed these entrepreneurs. This is something that, that the city does. Um, for me, the restaurant scene is a big one. And I've seen uh, Maine, for example. Maine is homegrown talent here, homegrown place from, from, the, from Canada. Now it's in London. Um, and uh, Sama, a good friend of mine, he's uh, Akidori, he's doing things and now looking to expand into London and overseas and in other areas as well. So it's, 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 for me, it's, it's one, a wonderful thing to see the food actually going as it should be and that's as well. The, and that's the thing, isn't it? We've just highlighted their diversity. You've talked about cosmetics and fashion. You've talked about food and beverage. You know, tonight we're going to be talking tech. We're going to be talking finance. We're going to be talking, again, F&B scene as well. But it's across the board, and that's what I love, you know. Yeah, certain parts of the world are really good at promoting certain industries, but here, Again, I know I've said it time and time again. I sound like a stat record, but there's something in the water. <laughs> Everyone's drinking from the same fire hydrant at the moment, and therefore we've got we've got this entrepreneurial buzz going. And that's and I genuinely believe that because of the infrastructure that's been put in place here, and because of that very positive outlook here, you know, can we have very negative outlooks in other parts of the world? But that positivity is what encourages people take that jump and make that hustle their thing. More of the Dubai water, I think. The entrepreneurial <laughs> water. Yes. Right. Our guest co-host. We cannot do this without our guest co-host. And today we have a very special person. Let's find out who that is. Hi, I'm Ritesh Tilani, founding partner of Enhanced Ventures, and I'm excited to get this show on the road. 
Ritesh will join us in a little bit, but first, as the biggest food exhibition in the city is underway, Khalid went down to Gulf Food to explore the changing trends in the food industry with culinary experts, budding chefs, and also some special tasting sessions. So let's take a look. Hey foodies, I'm at Gulf Food 2024 and this year's theme is real food, real business. So you can see everything that's happening in the food industry when it comes to restaurants, AI and interesting things to eat. Very tasty. Now, with a growing population, as you said, coming to 10 billion, what a part of the industries maybe we're focusing, maybe using AI or saying on with technologies, what would be the main focus to fight that challenge? Look, there's a lot of different things. Some people will say, hey, just take the places that eat too much food, stop them eating too much food and send it somewhere else. We've been telling people for decades, don't eat too much food or you'll die of type 2 diabetes and obesity. How else that works? It hasn't. And then people say, just waste less. But in-home waste is a very intractable problem. So we need to look at some other way of filling that gap between what we can grow sustainably within planetary boundaries using our current food system and the 50 to 70% more food that we actually need. And my view is the best way to do that is through new technologies. Now, focusing on food in the future, what can we expect from the food industry? I think uh, what we can expect, for, you know, the, the, sometimes uh, we're thinking about the future and we, every time we're thinking about the space. But uh, okay, space also can be. I think in the future we can change the planets like we change the cities. It's easy. And uh, I think how, what uh, human need to eat at this period. Of course, I will learn and search a lot of, for spacemen, what uh, kind of ingredients they need to use for strong health. I'm here with Mark Naper, who is the Vice President of uh, Exhibitions. It's a pleasure having you here with us today. Mm -hmm. And tell us what is so important about food. Um, well, we, we can't live without it, is the, is the simple answer. But um, for something to arrive on our plate, and then what, what I didn't recognize before I got into food trade shows, was that there's an enormous industry that sits behind us. Um, here we have, I think, five and a half thousand companies who are exhibiting here in Dubai. And we have 127 official country pavilions. For many countries, food and food exports is an important part of their economy. Now, tell me more about the idea. Like a lot of people now are moving away from traditional milk now to other substances. What is it milk? or other ingredients? Yeah, it's uh, produced from oats. The oats are the Nordic superfoods and Estonia is particularly proud of the oats because we have the, the best quality of those. We only use organic oat flakes, so that makes the drinks also very pure, very fresh. And yeah, we offer a very good alternative to people who actually would like to avoid milk nowadays. And these people, are, this segment is growing rapidly, so we hope that we have enough supply uh, for this demand. We had a fabulous time here at Gulf Food where we got to taste interesting dishes, talk to fabulous people, how they're changing the industry from human growth to 10 billion people and how to feed them. Come on down and check it out yourselves. So plenty of food for thought there, a little tip though. If you're feeling peckish, get down to Gulf Food this week because there is plenty, plenty going on down there and plenty of freebies. Completely. As well. All right. Stuffed my bag and my face. <laughs> <laughs> right, back to today's big theme. We are talking all things entrepreneurial spirit and more specifically homegrown talent. Uh, our guest co-host today is a founder in his own right on a mission to improve consumer lifestyle in the region through his startup studio and platform. Enhanced Ventures, an active player in the tech ecosystem, which is growing here and becoming even more influential. Please welcome the very influential British Delani. How lovely to see you again. Great to see you too, Tom. Good to have you on board. Pleasure. How's it all been? It's been good. It's been busy. There's lots happening in the tech ecosystem, as you might have heard. I've, I've, I've heard a few rumblings. Yeah, I've heard a few. Uh, and, and I suppose that goes back to the point that we've been making a little bit earlier on. This. This overall, uh, overarching theme, if you like, of, of homegrown talent. And if there is one sector out there, and I know we're shining a light on a number out there, 
it is tech that has caught my mind here. I know there's been a tech boom in the world over, etc. But the support that the tech ecosystem and landscape has been getting here in recent years is now paying dividends. Agree? It has indeed. I mean, if you look at the recent past, there have been a number of big exits, most of which have been coming out of the UAE. So whether it's Souk being bought out by Amazon, Kareem being bought out by Uber, Kitopi raising massive rounds. I mean, they're all homegrown businesses, right? So the fact that there are these big exits attracts a lot more new investors, and that's what we need to keep growing this tech ecosystem. So the more exits we have, the more funding comes in, the more these businesses are able to spend to attract talent, to you know, have stands at events like the ones that, that we're seeing, for example, this week at Step Conference. Yeah. Um, and the more buzz there is in the ecosystem, the more talent is attracted into these businesses and the more likely they are to succeed and have more exits. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, a, a positive cycle, if you will. Mm. Ritesh, I'm fascinated to know a little bit more about your company, Enhance Ventures. Can you tell us exactly what you do? Sure, so Enhance Ventures is a venture studio where we focus on building businesses around the future of finance and the future of commerce. So we have businesses ranging from an online gift marketplace called Joy Gifts, which has been around now for a few years and has raised a few rounds of funding and is doing quite well and is continuing to raise more rounds of funding over the coming weeks and months, all the way to an AI-based uh, prop tech platform called Prop AI, where we help residential real estate investors make investments uh, in real estate. So uh, it's, it's quite exciting. We, we are building more businesses. We're, we're now we're in the process of closing a, a $30 million fund to help us build the next 12 ventures. Um, we also have a corporate innovation business where because we start getting inbound leads for large organizations, both government and private sector, wanting to build digital businesses of their own, needing help with it, um, we created Enhanced Innovation to help them with exactly that. So we worked with everyone from the DIFC to help them with their strategy to attract studios to the region, to working with a sovereign wealth fund called ADQ to help them build a digital business in the food tech, agri-tech space. So f food tech, we've got food, we've got properties. One of the biggest industries I would say is healthcare um, and AI is on the rise as well. So I know you're doing something with a, a company, you're doing some agent investing for, for uh, health, healthcare AI tech company? <laughs> yes, so, so one of the things I do on the side is I, I like to support young um, budding entrepreneurs, whether it's through mentoring or, or advice, um, but I also have invested as an angel in a company called Medicus AI, for example which empowers users to take control of their health and make more informed decisions using data and AI, and that's uh, doing well as well. They've expanded to Europe and, uh, and continue to grow as well. Um, I've also, I, I serve on the board of uh, a few companies over the years, one of which recently had an exit. It's called Carzati, so they sell cars online. And uh, Kavak, which is one of the bigger players globally out of Mexico, decided to expand to the region and they bought that out. So I was on the board of that company as well. So. I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to find myself working with some great entrepreneurs who are doing very exciting things and have managed to succeed over the years. How much, how much of it is managing expectations at the moment? And the reason I ask is if we look at the, 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 the tech ecosystem and landscape as it is, and those great success stories that you've just mentioned there, and yet, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's still quite young, it's still quite nascent in many ways. But a lot of people will look in from outside and go, oh, 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 oh Dubai is the place to go, the UAE is the place to go in order to launch my, my, my tech startup. Is there an element of sort of education from you to clients to go, you know, um, it's not, th th there's a lot of hard work that goes into it? Look, entrepreneurship in general, anywhere in the world is one of the hardest things you could possibly take on. And it's definitely no easy feat here in the UAE either, and especially since cost of living here has kept increasing and it's exorbitantly high now to live in Dubai in general. So hiring talent here automatically inflates the cost of building and growing a business. Yeah. Um, and, and there's constant struggle to attract and, and retain that talent as well because everyone's fighting for a small pool of talent here. Fundraising is not easy either anywhere in the world and more so in the Middle East because we still don't have enough. Um, per capita, we, we are on the lower end of funding availability for startups. Um, so you have you know, countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia launching more and more initiatives to help, but there's still a long way to go. Mm. Um, we have more and more events that helps raise the profile of businesses. <coughs> 
but it, it's still a talent and fundraising game. Those yeah. are the two biggest bottlenecks and we continue to face that problem. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, Ritesh. And um, I think we need to uh, talk after the show as well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 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 but coming up, we meet the founder of the homegrown burger brand, Hyde Joint. And we've got a child entrepreneur starting and sharing his profits and his revenues with us. And don't forget, we've got one of the headlining performers from the Sharjah Entrepreneurship Festival coming your way. So stay right here.